Hi folks, welcome back. Uh, we're on the garage conversion again today. I'm gonna hopefully get all of the stud walls finished off and most of the insulation done. So stick around, we'll see how we get on. So I'm afraid it's kind of more of the same. Uh, this is basically the same uh, process that we went through before Christmas when we were doing the other end of the garage, the other room, uh, which is an insulated stud wall on the internal side of the uh, the existing single skin brickwork or block work down the other end. And that will give us um, an insulated stud will then insulate over the top of that. This end's a little bit different. Down the other end, I had so much space and uh, the ability to make up my stud work frames and then raise those uh, and then put our kind of uh, breather membrane on the back and raise them as one. Here there's so much going on in this end I don't I can't really got the space to do that. So just in case any of you haven't seen the other videos, these are not structural in any way, these studs. Um, these are basically infill panels to carry our insulation, to fix our stud work to, and in this instance there'll be some cabinets going up. Um, I'm not going to, normally I'd put plywood on the studs before I plasterboard um, to carry the cabinets, that's a really kind of easy way to just go straight for it and then you don't have to guess exactly where all your fixings are going to be. In this case, because I've got this big, whatever it is, nine inch uh, beam up here, I, I've got fixing up there. I'll be hanging them that high anyway. So I, I know I'm going to hit something strong.
So I'm afraid not much in terms of uh, footage. This morning, uh, Dad came over, gave me a hand with all this. We've really kind of ploughed through a lot of the stud work. So we've used a pretty narrow stud work here, three by two or 63 mil or whatever it is. Um, and that's given us enough of a standoff from this wall to even things out because it was an old stone wall. Um, plus there's a lot of services that run along here. So although we've lost quite a bit of the room by doing that, uh, in the long run, it's just gonna speed things up. There was no way we were gonna be able to just skim on here because up here there's all sorts going on. There's the old flue and lead work and stuff on the old roof. So that's given us that. I've also had an electrician over and that was helpful because um, although I'd love to do everything myself, there's certain things you've got to give over to uh, the pros. Turn this radio off. Certain things you just have to let go of. Um, you know, you can try and do everything yourself and I could have done it and got things working safely. But if we've got to tick all the boxes, because this is a building regs um, under a building notice for a garage conversion, everything's got to be done properly. So uh, I'm going to get that quote through. It's probably going to hurt reading it, but uh, it just, it's done. You know, it'll be a couple of guys come in one day, smash out first fix, and then we can get on with plasterboarding. So I just have to let it go. Um, but as far as said work goes, we're on it. Uh, load of noggins to do now and we should just have enough timber then I can get on with the insulation I think what I'll do is I'll cut and fit all of my insulation between the stud walls uh, and between the noggins and stuff but leave them not put that second layer on yet so the when the guys come into the electrics if they need to pop them out they can just pop them out pop them back in again but it's time for some man glitter I've even got my t-shirt on today so uh, let's go on with the noggins all right 10 minutes until I'm on daddy duty, so we're not gonna get it done. Interesting feedback from the noggin debate on the last video. I'd say it was about 50-50 split, whether you stagger or line up your noggins. Some people were saying that they don't even recommend screwing your plasterboard into them. So I don't think you can go too far wrong. I am staggering them on these simply because I'm using a nail gun and it's just a little bit easier to get things in. As in the last video, sloping ceiling, every stud's different. This is really coming into its own. A load of people asked about this in the last video, so I will stick a link for it down below. Because these three inch studs are a little bit weak and wobbly, I'll probably just tie them into the wall. Uh, just that really helps, just a couple of points. But um, that's another reason why I've gone with two noggins on this wall. I need a flipping barn, not a workshop. Maybe we should do a Doresta and build ourselves a giant barn. So with the stud walls built, later that day I finished off the corner studs where we cut across on an angle. Now I made a separate video on that, on how to cut those corner angled studs and I will link to that video at the end of this one. And then in the next video I'll be drilling the last of the two cores for extractor units before we finish off with the insulation and get ready for the electrics first fix to go in, then the plasterboard, then the plastering, and somehow get a room out of this place. So thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself, and we'll see you next time.